Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we start a new mini-series, um, which I think is going to go maybe up to six, seven or eight or nine videos on how to get Hello World kind of programs accomplished on the mainframe. As you know, um, uh, the Hello World has over the last 20, 30 years or so become the standard way for people to approach a new programming language, a new system and learn it because printing out Hello World, which is in most languages just a simple print statement, is the uh, simplest uh, program that accomplishes something. And uh, learning a language by getting a sense of accomplishment as you add complexity is the way that I think is the best way to learn a programming language. Maybe there are other ways, but it's proven to be a very effective way. So I think that if we uh, want to make the mainframe great again, um, to use a political analogy, then uh, uh, approaching it from the hello world perspective is the easiest way. Today we're going to deal with JCL. JCL stands for Job Control Language. And the first thing I want to get to say right off the bat is that <laughs> even though it's called Job Control Language, it's not a form complete programming language. And when I say form complete, it means that it doesn't have all the components of a programming language which uh, makes it real language. Uh, as you know, one of the theory of computer sciences, which has been proven by the way, this theory, is that uh, as long as a programming language is uh, form complete, it can be translated automatically by software, by computer, into any other form complete programming language. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, JCL is not a form complete programming language. It lacks several structures that are important for, for, for such uh, for, for a form complete language. However, it is a language in the sense that it automates uh, the execution of uh, batch jobs in a mainframe environment. And so it's a, uh, JCL is a, is a central concept to the IBM mainframe world and you can't really do without learning at least some aspects of JCL. Uh, whether you're coming from Windows or you're coming from Linux and you want to start doing some stuff on the mainframe or whether you're an enthusiast and want to know more about the mainframe or where, or whether you're at, at the job, uh, your boss says, uh, by the way, from now on, you're also going to do some stuff on the mainframe, you can't get around JCL. And so here's the wiki page for JCL. It says it's a scripting language, which is true, uh, but again, uh, it's a scripting language for executing batch jobs. What it does is it comes from the world of the 50s and 60s, but of course, it's still very, very important today. So um, we're going to write hello world here. And um, um, this is the main screen here when you log in. It's called the ISPF, which stands for Interactive System Programming Facility. Everything in the IBM world is called a facility. Um, facility is kind of a, like a product in the, in the modern world um, or in the, today's world. Uh, but it can also stand for feature or for component. So um, it just, it's just the way it is. So uh, I'm going to go to the editor here. Uh, create or change source code and uh, I have here this is like a folder that's how you have to imagine it moshix.work.jcl there's an invisible dot here but if you write it out here it would be moshix.work.jcl uh, that's the name of the whole data set the folder a data set and a folder and the file can sometimes be one and the same thing and here within this data set I'm going to put in a member which is a file so this is the data set of the folder. Within that folder, I'm going to have hello, oh, hello world um, um, uh, member or file. Okay, so I would usually just type here JC macro because I wrote the macro which inserts the job card. Um, job card is the one uh, thing within any JCL that identifies to the operating system who you're running this job for and some uh, specifics about what message class, um, where you want the output to go to a real printer, you want to be held and put in a in a in a directory on a spool directory, or who you want to notify when the job is done, how much memory to assign to it, and the execution class. So uh, in your shop, you probably have several execution classes, and they can be prioritized, etc. But since uh, no, not everybody would have. Um, the JC macro installed that I re actually created in a in a in a video about maybe eight nine months ago how to create macros for the ISPF editor. This is the editor. We're just going to do it by hand. Okay. So insert 
three. I'm going to say here yeah, Moshix seven. Um, hello. Um, and then class equals A, message class equals age, message level means I want the full output to be sent to me or given to me. And then region uh, 30 megabyte, which is way more than we actually need. The mainframe is very, very resource um, uh, efficient. So if we want to make this all, the JCL has to be all in uppercase. So we write here UC for uppercase. We can also do caps on here. And now everything will be turned into uppercase automatically. And then we say here, we put in a comma as the continuation. You can't write anything on column 72. So this column 72 is a no touch area. Just remember that for now. Uh, we say notify equals Moshix. So I'm user Moshix right now logged in on this mainframe and so i want to be notified when the job has executed so as i said jcl doesn't really have a a print statement uh, but we can use uh, help programs that are delivered with the operating system with zos to get the same thing accomplished and so there's uh, any elegant operating system will always offer several ways to accomplish something that's one of the characteristics of an elegant system, that there's several ways to accomplish something. So we're gonna look at one or two of them today. Um, you always have to have this um, slashes in the front. That's how the operating system knows that it's JCL it is looking at, otherwise it doesn't know what to do with it. And we're gonna say here, uh, hello, and we're gonna say exec program IEB gener, generate. Um, that's a, a program that's like a utility Kind of like in, in Linux, you would have uh, more or um, all those programs that come delivered to the operating systems or Windows, you would have um, copy and several of those um, utilities that come with it. So that's the same thing. So that's one of them. And so we're going to run this job. And the hello is the name of the step. Every job has one, at least one or several steps. And then we're going to say sysprint equal bd sys out. We want to go the print to what we specified here, right? And then we say sys uh, ut1 bd. Uh, we're going to say sys in bd dummy. Dummy means nothing. Um, then we're going to say sys ut one so um sysprint is call almost like sys out on in the linux world and sys in of course is sys in so there is no sys in sys ut1 would be um, a, a file that the program that this program expects to find and so we're going to say here this is the commands that we're going to give to. So this is a way we can actually give commands to a program is by um, using the files it expects to find. So this file will become sys input to this file. Um, so we say, um, hello world. Okay. Then we end the input and see you is ut2 which is also a file that this program expects to have which is the output so this is going to be the input and it's going to be the output um sys out oops equals and then in theory we're supposed to put in here two empty double slashes um oh and there's a typo already okay so this um, should uh, should give us the um, the program. I'm just going to put in JSON marker anyway, so I don't make any mistakes with the input card. The job card here is very important. If this doesn't work, nothing will run. Oh, I had forgotten the job statement, <laughs> so it's good I did this. So I'm going to put it in held output, so it's going to go into the output queue. Our region is um, 20 megabytes is more than enough. Okay, so why don't we try to run this job? We save it and then we submit it for execution by writing submit. 
uh, there's a JCL error somewhere. Where is it? Oh, I know what I did. Program equals IEB Jenner. Okay. Job 7,444. Since this is, uh, ZOS is a multi-user system, you always want to keep track of your own jobs. So when you execute, it will tell you what your job number is. Kind of like process IDs um, on Unix and Linux. But here they're more important because that's how I identify your own stuff. So this ended, it tells us job 744 ended with maximum condition code 000, which means there were no errors whatsoever. So we start a different uh, virtual session. We go to uh, system display and search facility, which just means where you go check out your output for all intents and purposes. Um, and remember 7444, that was my job. And so here it is, hello world. So this is all just to tell you that you ran a job, allocated certain data sets like sysprint as we mentioned, sysn, all allocated to this job. And then it was executed and tells us how long it took to execute. It took 236 kilobytes to run this job. So 20 megabytes was more than enough. Um, and this took um, how long? Well, it's it was so short that on this system that uh, it didn't even register here. It's it's in the uh, in the millions of seconds. So it's not gonna it's not gonna. It didn't even get across uh, the timer here. But here is the hello world. So we did mission accomplished. Everything else we can do. F9 switches back and forth. Everything we can do we're gonna take from here, right? And add more stuff. So that's one way to do hello world. Um, another way. As I said, there's always several ways to skin a cat in ZOS. And by the way, everything that I'm doing here also applies to MBS, which is the predecessor of the predecessor of ZOS. And there is a hobbyist version out there called uh, MBS 3.8 TK4. MBS 3.8 TK4. And, uh, and you can download this and run it on your own computer just to practice. Uh, of course, ZOS is much, much newer, much more advanced, but you can do the exact same thing over there. Um, one more thing I want to point out is that we have started a campaign. Uh, the um, IBM Mainframe Enthusiast community has started a campaign to uh, uh, petition IBM to obtain MVS XA. And why is MVS XA important? Because the one that we have here as uh, uh, in the in the public domain is only able to execute to address 24 bits of memory at a time which is 16 megabytes so the whole operating system has to fit within 16 megabytes of ram and then run programs in there and it's certainly possible to do it and we've done a lot with tk4 the community has contributed a lot of stuff that wasn't even there when mvs was released such as uh, tcp ip an ftp server a web server all kinds of stuff, um, but it's a limit. It's a bit limiting, and so what we petition IBM, Facebook, um, mainframe channel. Let's see if we can find it. There's a public page here, which I'm maintaining, where we petition uh, IBM. Oh, it wants me to log in. I don't know why Facebook has to insist on people logging in not now so where we have a page where we petition ibm as you can see here today we start a campaign to save mesxa and bmxa from extinction uh, they haven't been seen around in a long long time maybe even i'm sure ibm still has it somewhere but um, we're starting a, a community-led uh, campaign to petition ibm to give us mesxa and vmxa and the 31-bit compiler so we can actually let the uh, millennials of today and the people who want to approach the mainframe and start getting to know it uh, well can actually run it at home and and practice on it because access to mainframes is actually not that easy to find you can't just go to github and or install it on you need to have something that you can you know the real mainframes are hard to access but if we have mbsxa we will add all those amazing things such as tcpip FTP server, um, um, a web server, we're going to have maybe a telnet server, 
We can even actually make a, a Unix kind of op operating system such as Xenu, uh, Xenu, uh, this one, uh, run inside it. And there's been some effort to do it, but it just doesn't fit in 16 megabytes. MBSXA is 31 bit, so it can address two gigabytes. And nobody, you know, and IBM is not going to lose any business out of it because it's too small for any business, real business application. But for the for the for the enthusiast community, and for the people who want to learn about mainframe, it would be a huge boon, and it would allow us to bring so much uh, fun into this again and make the mainframe visible and accessible to the average uh, IT person. So we're we're campaigning for that. We're shortly going to have also a web page up. Where we're going to collect signatures and i'm sure ibm is listening actually i know that ibm is listening to these videos and um and um here is my petition to you ibm whoever it is inside ibm who can make that decision please contact that person inside ibm and tell them how good this is for ibm how great it is to have uh, developers uh, start to learn the ibm mainframe operating system and mbs xa and zos are very very similar um, of course, you know, that is 30 years in between, but everything that can be done on MBSXA can also be done on ZOS. And the same goes for VMXA, which is the, um, which is the time sharing and hypervisor for 31-bit uh, from IBM. Both of them released in the early 80s. And so IBM, whoever it is at IBM, we respect you. We love your operating systems. There are thousands of people's, uh, people who watch these videos and are enthusiastic about the mainframe. And there's a lot of interest from the younger generation. So please do give us uh, MBSXA and VMXA uh, into the public community. We don't need the source code. Um, we, as long as you give us the installation tapes, we can take it from there. And, um, and we'll, you'll see how good this is gonna be for the mainframe. So end of, uh, end of this part. So um, let's go back to, uh, skidding this cat in a different way we're gonna again write hello world but we're gonna use a different program called the sort program to accomplish the same thing um, so what we're gonna do is we say I sort okay and uh, so let's change that a sysprint stays sys n we we move and then we say sort in so we're gonna use sort to copy input from the, um, the supplied sys in here to uh, to the output uh, sort in and then we're going to say sort out mm. so it's going to go to standard output and then we're going to say sys in um, and we're going to say here oops option copy so which means we take whatever's in sort in and copy and sort out and we need a termination card here every line here is called a card because the this all comes from the punch cards which i find fascinating it's a beautiful thing that we still think in terms of punch cards from uh, 60 years ago but uh, that notion of punch card is still everywhere in the mainframe and i think it's a beautiful thing um, so here we execute hello sort we print everything um, to this class. Sort in, we say this is the data that goes into sort in. The sort out goes to this class also. Sys in is the command to this program saying copy whatever is in sort in to sort out. So let's see if this runs. Let's identify it as nine. So we can keep it apart. Program 7445, so there's not much activity going on. Ooh, max condition code 20. Something went wrong. Canceling some old output. So let's see what's wrong here. Uh, what is wrong? So that's a good thing when something doesn't go well, so we can all learn more. Uh, Oh, sys out. That's a mistake. Yeah, it needs to be. There needs to be a sys out statement, as we just saw here. So this one's a sys out statement. And so if we provide it here, we say sort in. This is the input data. Sort out is where it goes, which is output. 
it needs a sys out in this case because this program demands it and sys in. So if we do it like this, um, let's call it A. Let's see. Yeah, this ran uh, job 7448 condition code zero. So let's, let's go check it out. And yes, so hello world. So we can see here now a different program was uh, invoked to execute it, uh, the sort program, uh, but we accomplished exactly the same thing. So we copy this from sort in to sort out, and this is the commands to the sort program. We just we can just call it sort, and and this will run just the same. So seven four four nine. Yeah, as you can see. Let's go to the bottom. Yes, hello world. So two simple ways to do hello world on the mainframe and uh, our petition <laughs> to IBM to obtain a MBS XA and VM XA. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below this video. There's a whole community of thousands of people here who will see the comments and uh, and uh, endeavor to answer. And uh, I will, of course, also answer. If you have any other remarks, please uh, put them in the comments below this video. If you have not subscribed yet to the Moshex Mainframe channel, now is a very good time to do it, to see all the other Hello World uh, videos I'm going to make. And, uh, and uh, come back soon again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.